Hello and welcome to another video. We got a speedrun here. Jedi Survivor. This is the record as of May 20th, but it will probably be beaten within a week as these things happen with new games. But I decided to pick this up because it's actually a decent speedrun and one of the easiest games to pick up if you're interested in speedrunning. This is kind of a summary of all the current tech found in the any percent route by the Jedi Survivor speedrunning Discord community, who is also working on New Game Plus routes, glitchless routes, all that good stuff. So check that out if you are interested. But this is kind of a nice timestamp of what the run currently looks like about a month after release. So grab some seat, and let's just jump into it. You always have to overwrite a game file. I lost my casual save because of that. You also need to turn off the tutorials every time you start a run. It doesn't save it for whatever reason. But shoutouts to skippable cutscenes. Opening up, we have a very nice four minute walking sequence. But what's to stop the Senator from taking our prisoner and chucking us into a sky lane? He needs to keep this quiet. That's right. Sidestepping Inquisitors, one up. There is actually a little tech here. You can get in front of these guards. This is actually Bravo on the left and Gab on the right. This is your crew. You cannot boost off of Bode, the one carrying the suitcase, because he does not have collision like the other two do. But they can push you along a little bit. It saves a handful of seconds. Like rats in a maze. I don't like it. Stick with the plan. We'll be fine. As long as I get paid. A little smooch on the helmet. Mwah. These stormtroopers on New Game Plus, you can actually confuse with a mind trick. And they will smack you the whole way up to the point you're trying to get to. So they'll give you a little boost by hitting you. But they'll also hit everyone else that you're walking with. That can cause some interesting glitches and... Maybe some soft locks. Not according to the propaganda. Also spoilers. I think it's given for a speed run. But all you need to do is get up to this probe droid and everyone will lock into place. So if you turn off tutorials, you don't have to press buttons for all these small tutorial segments of the game. If you leave it on, the game will freeze and wait for you to press the button. So we have some very uh, tutorial combat here. And we're also going to do a lot of jump attacks in the game. For one, it can get around blocking enemies by technically hitting them in the back. And it has the added benefit of not triggering cutscene kills. 
which have long animations. Oh, we don't die here. We gotta get to that yacht. That was a close one, buddy. It's not your fault. Catch up with the yacht. So here we're gonna see the first instance of a pause buffer clip, or a PBC. So on the PC version, the F11 key toggles whether you're windowed or full screen, and that's built in, it's not a mod or anything. But by pressing F11 two quick times to go into windowed and back into full screen, it creates enough lag to clip through a lot of doors and walls. You also need to go into photo mode for that trick to work at all. So you just load up the game, go into photo mode on a save file, and then start your run. So right here, you'll see the main movement tech. You'll see pretty much the whole game. By pressing dash twice, Cal lunges forward and cancel the animation by holding block. And then you repeat that until you have carpal tunnel. Should we have eyes on the target? Not yet. Let's go. Move, move, move. There. What are we looking for? Suspect's nail. I bought that. Oh, it's you. The yacht. Still drifting. That's the spirit BD. We'll get it. What? I can't believe we got caught in for an extra shift. A lot of crime on the street these days. I thought I was an intruder. Don't let up. I come on it. There he is. Shoot the kill. Closer. Get in there, BD. Don't look down. And normally you have to walk with Bode here and talk to him, but there is a little trigger over here that you walk into and it thinks you're done, so you can run again. Coob and Liz are probably starving by now. You can actually pause buffer clip through that wall here on the left, but it's a little dangerous because you can get stuck inside of it. And it's a bit of a soft lock if you don't know how to get out. No gunship. Think you can knock down that crate? Worth a shot. If you hold left click, you go faster with BD1 on these zip lines, which I did not know until somebody told me. Important lesson read the controls. I thought you to move like that. My master. Every time I fell, he got me back on my feet. Sounds like a good teacher to me. Stormtrooper patrol. If you double wall jump here, you can get over the ledge without grabbing it. Yeah. See that cable? On it, get this. optimal? Probably not. This will be a nice time capsule for later on. We can look back and be like, oh, look at us noobs. Doing Coruscant normally and not the straight to credits skip. Let's get the drop on it. Sure thing. On your signal. This is where you get introduced to the companion mechanic. You can tell your companion, Bode here, to throw down a stun grenade. Yeah, you too. Let's try up that way. Quit reading my mind, Jedi. The yacht's just over there. And of course, the bridge is under construction. It is possible to pause buffer on console. You do it by pausing, switching to the options menu, and then unpausing. And that gets you enough lag to get through some doors. This place is a ghost town. Another quick pause buffer clip here, and we're heading to the first boss. And you're gonna notice right when we get out of this crack, it's going to show us an error message. 
Satan says that you're not supposed to be here in the story. You have skipped something, and it will give you the option to load to where it thinks you should be, which is at the beginning of Coruscant. But it lets you proceed anyways. And do you want to kill this boss with a jump attack? I kind of triggered the animation here because I jumped, but Cal was still not out of his jump squat, so it triggered anyways. I don't think he was a fan of you either. Aren't we all? So here we get the ascension cable, grapple hook, like any proper AAA game should have. Hope the crew's doing all right. Gabs gets bored. She might slice into Imperial comps for fun. She back good. Too good. Syndicate trained, but got on the wrong side of her employers. Bravo used to fly for the Republic. Ex-military. That explains a lot. I just start working with Goon and Liz. Cantino. Another little skip. Just jump on top of this billboard instead of running across it. Throw him down a mine shaft. Friends ever since. At this point, there's the senator's ship up there. We gotta go get up there and kidnap the senator. All that good stuff. But we're gonna go a different way a bit. Hey, Bravo. No job ever goes according to plan, does it? What fun would that be? How's the new guy doing? Bit of a talker, but good in a fight. Huh, I'll take it. Gab slice the yacht. Senator can't call for help. He's locked in pretty tight. So there are green walls in the game that are meant for backtracking later with a different ability, but with pause buffer clips, you can get to these shortcuts immediately. What should I do? There. Mini boss fight. Just kidding. Pause buffer clip. He's in here somewhere. We'll find him. Be ready. So here you get confused. You don't need to confuse anyone. Sometimes you can get that early grapple hook. I feel like it's just luck or randomness. Another room. You can just skip. Pause buffer clip. Screw it. So the ninth sister boss fight's coming up, but there is an entire skip for that as well. Clip through this door. And we're actually going to clip out of the building and take some little out-of-bounds terrain. There's another invisible wall here we need to get through. And jump along the side of this building. And this leads you straight to the door after the ninth sister fight. No boss fight. No thank you. Boat, bravo. Are you there? Let's get back to the Mantis. If the others made it out, they'll meet us at the hangar. Incoming threat! Double push that guy because sometimes he sticks around. It was a boring conversation anyway. There's a cutscene trigger here as well you can clip through, so you don't have to talk to Bode and Bravo. And now we're just heading to the final escape sequence. It's a little fight. Or rather, a big fight. Moving into position. I've got you covered. Let's do this. None of these enemies' AI is ready for you because you have not opened the door. And you don't need to kill every stormtrooper here. Bravo is giving sniper fire from afar. But you do want to kill some of them. Like damage. You won't be made. 
Not bad, Boat. Not bad yourself. And that's Coruscant. We are out. And now we're on the Mantis, heading to Kobo. But we gotta clean up the ship for Grease. Before we visit Grease, you know how he is about mess. This is the only cosmetic you'll get in any percent. Is the required BD1 cleanup. Check your lightsaber. Looks good. We're almost there. Let's head up to the cockpit. And it's time to land at Kobo. is on the other side of all this? Mind giving me a closer look? Last time I saw a Lucre Hulk was Braca. Long time ago. We're gonna actually rest at a meditation point. We're going to level up two abilities to get improved lunging strike, which we're going to use in just a bit here. For now, we just need to keep dash dancing. Keep going. I actually have no idea what, what the community calls this movement, but uh, it involves a dash, animation canceling, dash canceling, dodge canceling. What do you think it should be called? Leave a comment. So here we're coming up on the first lunging strike skip, or a stab launch as I like to call it. Kill this guy because he'll just shoot you while you're trying to do this trick. So this requires a pretty precise lineup. Very luckily, I got it on the first try. But you use some uh, physics there in Cal's quick lunge to get a little bit of a boost. Eyes open! We got a visitor! Scuzz we just need to find a way through here. Grease is going to be surprised to see us, huh? So what we want to do is head to one of my favorite places in the game, which is where you find Cal's mullet in a treasure chest. Unfortunately, the speedrun doesn't involve equipping the mullet, but maybe it could in the future. But more importantly, you're over here because there is another stab launch that skips most of this tar pit area. Let's see what's over here. It's an inconsistent launch, but even now the community's finding more consistent setups for that. This next room has tons of enemies that can shoot you and slow down your jumps. So I actually killed that battle droid so they don't all aggro earlier. This jump right here, if you get shot, you'll get slowed down and probably not make it. So a bit of a hectic room, but all you need to do is cut this rope and you can flip out. Is that? Boglings. And here's what I think is a Super Metroid reference when you learn wall jumping from some creatures. 
Bogglings are great. I would like a boggling. Not a bad change of scenery. Reese's place should be around here somewhere. So this is the segment of the game where you just dash across the entire map of Kobo, pretty much. The reason this run is so short is because there's a major sequence break that unlocks the final planet, Tantalor. But before doing that sequence break, we have to get the Mantis running again. Normally you'd do this by going to Pylon Saloon and talking to Grease, doing a hefty chunk of story. Instead, we're just gonna head straight to the Dagon fight, which will unlock the Mantis. Also, we're gonna have to learn Cal's creature taming abilities, because currently they are needed to perform the sequence break, which we'll see later on. We made it. It'll be good to see Grease again. It's been a long time. Maybe he knows where the others ended up. Seer stuck in the past. Marin wandering. Ancient history. We'll skip here. Make that jump. There is a backup if you fall. You just jump up to the left after you land on a little ledge. F11, F11. E Ray should be out here somewhere. Only way forward is Little skip here. If you activate the zip line and then jump and force push the obstacle fast enough, the zip line makes it first time. Watch out for this damn space chicken. What do you think this array is, buddy? Centauri Kree said it held the key to Tantalor. Z seems to think so too. Only one way to find out. They saw us. Let's move. Here we have an unintended jump. It's a bit tight, but you just run along the left side of the cliff while sprinting and get a good time double jump. And you skip some fights. There it is again. What is that? Also, when you're falling from high distance, Cal will roll on the ground when he lands. So to avoid that, you can swing your saber before you land, and Cal can move immediately after that. Maybe the raiders. So here we have some Kobo Matter. Cal will automatically walk when he's in the Kobo Matter, so you want to avoid that all you can. It's all that purple stuff down there. Don't know what that stuff is, but definitely doesn't look safe. Forest Array is a pretty long segment of the game casually, which ends with a Wampa fight, but all you need to do is go to the right over here past this wall, 
We call this Wampa Skip. And there are many Wampa Skips because there are so many ways to skip different parts of Forest Array that it's just become a meme that, oh, honey, wake up, new Wampa Skip just dropped. <laughs> All the critters around the array are pretty riled up. Could be the dust in the air. Imperial patrols probably don't help either. Just skipping through some more stormtroopers here, and they're gonna act like Cal mind controlled this creature because that's what the tutorial tells you to do, but you don't actually have to do that. He's afraid of a real fight. So here we're going to tame some wildlife for our own personal traversal use, as well as some cutscenes. Seer will always say situations. situations. This isn't the time to fight. Now this is more my speed. So you need this ball to unlock a couple bridges up ahead, and we're going to PBC through the store and try to take this ball along with us, but uh, enemies hitting you and being around kind of makes Cal's animations a bit wonky. Also I suck. But luckily the game is very lenient with this uh, ball and lets you grab it even when it's fallen down. But you do want to be quick because the ball will return to its origin if you leave it too long. Familiar 10. Same mechanisms powered Z's chamber. We're getting close. There's those spy droids again. We're not the only ones interested in the array. Alright, we are heading up to the Dagon fight. And we're actually going to rest at a meditation point here to establish our respawn point right along our way on the route. <sighs> Clip through this door. Clip through that door. And now we have some story to sit through. Is strong here. It's just as I told you. We'll build the temple here. Yes. So if you try to proceed through here too soon before they're done talking, it will actually respawn you here. Uh, and I thought I had given it way more time for them to dis disappear, but apparently I did not. So, free time save next time. Simply wonderful. Yes, it's perfect. I've seen the galaxy, Centauri, and there are many worlds that the light of the Jedi does not reach. 
I'm going to petition the High Council to train initiates here. Fontana Law. But it can be so challenging to access. What if something were to go wrong? Our temple will be a bastion for the Order. Here at the Galactic Frontier. The Abyss blocks comm signals. We'll have to invite a member of the Jedi Council to visit in person. Hmm. Release me. Please. So here we have the Dagon fight, the Battle of the Bulge. I didn't practice this fight, I'll be completely honest. But uh, you just kind of wail on him. He's not too bad, you just break his guard a few times, smack him around, he'll die. That's my official walkthrough. Stand and fight! That's such a chore! Of Mendagon? How could she entrust Tanalor to someone like him? So by now the Mantis is repaired, but we have to go unlock another ability. Not a bad view, huh, buddy? Wonder if Grease and Boat fix the Mantis by now. You don't want to run into the walls on these cliffs. The creature will drop you, and you'll have to redo the whole flight. All right, we are at the Neko Pools. You can jump off these vines and land kind of on the foliage here and skip around to avoid some of the sliding. And then head straight into here, which is where you will tame your Neko with mind control. Found her ticket out of here. Easy. This is a mount for Cal. You can ride faster, you can ride up watery slides, but you can also clip into walls with its snout, which we'll be doing later on. Mount up. It's also possible to get here a bit earlier, but you can't actually tame the Neko until you tame the Relter. So you have to get the Relter first, which is on the way to Dagon anyways. I bet we can clear that gate with so here you see me jump over the gate to unlock the door, but I actually just recently found a way to super jump with the Neko which is super easy. You just jump, pause buffer, and you get a huge jump. Jump! your way around Kobo, don't you? And here's the Mantis, all repaired. Ready for us to do the entire story. Let's meet him at the landing pad. You got it! Directly underground here is a control center that unlocks the final planet. But with the Neko, we can clip through a cliff here and get down there much earlier than intended. So with the Neko, you want to run it kind of into the wall where that little dip in the rocks is. And you can try to jump on its snout and sometimes it'll clip you in. Every once in a while it might be lined up wrong, so you need to walk away and call the Neko away from the wall. Because you can't mount it next to the wall. Come on, Neko. No! 
now! And there we are. So now we're out of bounds. Go ahead and jump down here. So you see that big cylinder room to the left. That is the story room that will unlock the final planet. And we're just trying to get in there. Go ahead and land on these spinning whatevers. And we're going to do another pause buffer clip to get through this wall. And one more to get through this locked door. Now, we're definitely not supposed to be here. So much so that the game doesn't even have the cutscene loaded. So here's a placeholder, and you just gotta wait for the timer, which is pretty funny. But you know what? I'm glad that's here and the game doesn't just crash. We want to switch to Jedi Grand Master mode so we can take damage from falling. We're going to clip out, try to start dying sooner. And then we're going to activate this when it becomes available, unlocking the final planet of the game. And now the fastest way to go back is to die. So let's activate this elevator. Clip out again while the elevator gets low enough for us to die through the elevator. Fun. Respawn at the meditation point, and luckily the mantis is already unlocked for us as a fast travel point. And I just talked to Z, who we've never met. Z. And we're on the mantis. Ready to go to any planet we want. Wants us to go to Jeddah, but we're going to go to Tantalor. And make sure you switch your game back to story mode before fighting the final boss. Also, Marin and Grease just load in in the cockpit. At this point, you're going to see all of the lore bits that you should have, that the game just loads in for you. These lore notifications are going to be popping up on your screen for the rest of the game. If you start a new game immediately after this run, the notifications will continue on your new game. Hope Grease is ready for a bumpy ride. So we're here at the end of the game. All we have left to do is take a nice walk through the flowers and kill the boss. So we got another nice dashing segment here. And Marin's here with us. So this is Tanalor. Not what you were expecting? I don't know what I was expecting. So much has changed since I first heard its name. The temple's this way. Dagon and Centauri Creed plan their future here. And look where it got them. Bode will not let this end peacefully. He has already used fatherhood to justify betrayal and murder. Now we have him cornered, with nowhere else to run. He will kill or be killed. Well, say something. You're right. 
But what about Kata? She's not much younger than we were when our families were taken from us. I know. You and I will carry that loss for the rest of our lives. But Kata still has a chance. Yes, she does. Very well. We will give both the choice to stand down. For Kata's sake. And ours. I keep thinking about something Seer once said. A warning. Every Jedi faces the dark side. I feel so much hatred towards Bode. Oh yeah, a lot of story has happened since we last saw Bode. Do you hear that? Gotcha. And you're going to want to turn your volume up during this scene transition. Best for my family! Here's Bode. Go ahead and use Marin her assist to stun Bode for some early damage. Distract him! I will start from the shadows. So here's a scripted event that goes into phase two. If you pause buffer during this phase transition, some real weird stuff can happen. Cal can warp straight up and fall through the world. Bode can disappear. He pretty much gets soft locked. During the making of this video though, we also found a way to safely exit that phase transition and stay on top of the platform for an extra phase, which skips a couple scripted moments. Like this button mashing part right here. This video's been hard to get out because we keep finding new things. <laughs> it's only been like two days. He always starts this phase of the fight with an unblockable attack, but you can just jump to not get hit by it because it's a pretty long animation. And this is a scripted sequence here, and you're pretty much on your way to beating the game at this point. And that is it. Now it's just a couple cutscene skips, and time ends when Jedi Survivor pops up on the screen. There it is. GG. Much time to be saved. Cool game. Really short. Really easy to learn. And as Grease always says at the end of every run. Well, it's not exactly what we expected. True. Well, thanks for watching. This is just kind of a timestamp of where the speedrun is. Obviously, it's not perfect. No speedrun is. 0.62 hours. Weird way to time a game. But thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the Jedi Survivor review, which is forthcoming. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.